All right, guys, welcome to another video from XF Motorsports, and we're back to the uh, Project uh, 630 SL, in which we're taking an old Mercedes SL and we're putting a massive C63 engine in it, not just the engine, the radiators, all the electronics, everything we're putting from the C63 into this car to basically um, turn it into something that looks a nice, like a nice classic car on the outside, but drives and performs just like a modern day C63. So uh, it's taken a while for us to get this far and uh, we haven't, um, well, made a video on it for a while because we had to do quite a lot of work on it before even getting to this video. But uh, for now, we have to get to a really challenging part in the project, um, doing a right-hand drive conversion on the car. And well, Stefan is gonna talk about how we're so, gonna. So yeah, we're gonna switch this car from left-hand drive to right-hand drive because it's going to leave in the country and we're actually have to switch the whole steering box and all that because it didn't fit and we're gonna switch it to an S-Class steering rack flipped upside down yeah. and the S-Class steering rack was actually too big to fit the proper geometry of the car so we're gonna come up, Sherry came up with a pretty clever idea to make pretty much any steering rack work for any car. Right, Sherry? Pretty much, with a little bit of fabrication though. Uh, and so, a lot of fun. Yeah, so uh, let's start off by showing you guys everything we've done on the car since the previous video, which is an awful lot. <laughs> and then let's get into, well, putting the steering rack in place and hopefully by the end of the video, getting this car working with a different steering rack yeah. and a steering, steering on the side. Steering working. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's get cracking. All right. So starting off by showing you guys everything that we've done on the car since the previous video. So, well, the most obvious thing you can see is at the front, we've had to fabricate a whole new front end for it. Uh, there was another fabricator, Kurt, working on it. Um, I'll include all his part, him doing all the fabrication at the front, but basically it was a lot of work fitting these radiators because they were actually wider than the chassis itself. So the chassis had to be cut, it had to be widened. And because the front end was so rusty, he couldn't weld on it. He basically had to cut the whole thing off and uh, make a whole new front end for it to get rid of all the rust to make it strong enough and to make it big enough to fit the uh, C63 radiators in there but now all these radiators do fit and they line up really nicely with the engine and everything. Uh, the engine itself we also had to do a little bit of modification on. Uh, we had to change the oil pans on it. We had to move from the C63 oil pans to the S63 oil pans which uh, basically has an oil uh, pickup at the front and we've done a bit of work on the engine too changing all the problematic things on it. The cam adjusters, head bolts, this one had the older style of head bolts that used to break and cause a lot of trouble so um, yeah, it's been a lot of work even getting to this point, but now um, the even more difficult part begins actually fitting that steering rack from an S-Class into this car, which is going to be a little difficult, but um, that's probably the best steering rack to go for this job. That's why we picked that one. But let's actually lift up the car, show you guys what we have underneath. and. So here's a look underneath the cars and everything that we've had to change on it. So the upper and lower oil pan we changed. We moved to an oil pan from a, an S63. Um, this one has a big oil pan at the front and I'll show you how we did this conversion. We had to change a few things internally too to um, get this working, but it wasn't actually too, too difficult. Everything bolted right up. And now we have freed all this space over here where the oil pan from the C63 originally used to go. So now we can actually uh, finally fit the steering rack from the S-Class into this car, which of course still needs quite a bit of work because the geometry is quite a bit different, but at least now we have the space to do it. Uh, for fitting this uh, oil pan in this car, we've had to do <laughs> quite a bit more cutting on the subframe to actually fit it in there. So we've had to cut this part of the subframe off, which of course means that we'll need to do even more work to reinforce the subframe because we need to, after the steering is mounted and after we figured the locations of everything, we have to uh, figure out a plan to reinforce the subframe, bring it back to its original strength. So yeah, let's uh, start off by showing you guys everything that we did on the car to get to this point. So Kurt is the newest part of the team. He's working on uh, fitting the massive C63 radiators into this car. We're just gonna make a template, make mm -hmm. it out of thin sheet metal, so we can remove it and put it back on. So when we put the bar that we're putting, we can make a plate with the four holes threaded and then we can just line it up with this bracket so we know it's in the exact right position. And then we can have it there with, without having too much headache. Yeah, sounds like a plan.
While Kurt was putting the radiators on the car, I got started on the engine, changing the oil pans from the C63 oil pans to the S63 oil pans. Here's a look at the C63 oil pump after it's out of the engine. Uh, basically to change this uh, pump into the S-Class pump. Now um, S-Class pumps by the way were really similar. The only difference I believe on those pumps was that uh, there was no stage over here. Basically it was the same pump but these gears were taken out. So I'm actually going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the same pump. Um, just take this back part off which I have already unbolted everything so uh, basically yeah, I'll just take two of these gears out the other two are press fit on those ones I don't even really need to take out um, on the S-Class they removed the whole thing and I believe there's um, the chain doesn't go all around but since if I want to do that I would have to go with a different chain smaller chain and also um, take out the press fit gears I'm just not going to bother doing that all I really need to do is take out these two gears and now uh, this scavenging stage will pretty much be useless. Uh, the oil from that stage will just circulate into this one and um, it will always stay in this pump. It wouldn't really go anywhere. So uh, yeah, that's all I really need to do. Other than this, um, yeah, the other difference is the uh, S-Class has this big oil collector at the bottom and the strainer over here. But yeah, even for that, all I can simply do is I just need to add some bends on this tube, um, link it down so that it goes to the uh, lines up with the uh, main uh, sump that is now going to be at the front and then this system is going to be pretty much converted to what's in the S-Class. <laughs> So here's a look inside the engine. Um, I've changed the head bolts on it, but even the buckets are extremely worn. You can see uh, these cap marks on the buckets. Sometimes what happens is these buckets, well, usually they're supposed to be spinning like this, but sometimes it gets stuck at one place and the cam repeatedly hits it in the same position and then it leaves these ridges on it. So it has like that one indent and then they definitely don't spin. They always stop at that position. So I'm gonna be changing all these buckets as well while I'm in there because they're looking pretty bad. And uh, yeah, these are the head bolts that came out. Pretty Pretty rusty, pretty um, horrible looking, so that's good that that's all replaced. And after that, I'm gonna give the engine a little bit of a cleaning, and then it's gonna be time to put it back in the car, and we'll carry on with the stuff that is left on the car. So the other thing we're replacing on this engine when everything is pulled apart is uh, these cam adjusters. So they have this pin over here that like, I made a video on it previously that also wears out and then this plate starts making noise. Um, previously we, uh, I showed another way of doing it. I welded and filled this and put it in the CNC machine and machined a new hole over here that um, also works fine. But for this one, we're not gonna be working that hard. Uh, there's another company in Vancouver, or no, somewhere in Canada, I keep forgetting where it is, but um, that person makes these new plates. They're already machined out of a harder grade of steel than this one so all you really do is we take this plate out you buy his plate and you put it in with a new pin that already comes with it and yeah then that solves the whole problem so that's what we're gonna do for this one we're just gonna replace all the plates and put this engine back together and it should be good to go back in the car then So getting to the steering rack finally, this is the steering rack that we're going to be using in this car. It's from a Mercedes S-Class, it's a pretty nice steering rack. Basically what we're doing is this is a steering rack from a left hand drive S-Class. We're flipping it over, we're turning it into a right hand drive and we had to flip it over because um, the direction of rotation is different in uh, this car than the other car because the uh, tie rod ends go behind the lower control arm rather than on the S-Class they go in front of that so that's how everything was going to work for our application and now next what we need to do is we need to figure out the mounting location now that we've cleared enough space on underneath the engine that we can fit it that we just got to find a place we got to make the mounts for it and then after that we need to make we need to do a little bit more fabrication to actually make like a bracket on which these uh, tie rod ends are going to attach on and it has to be different from we can't use the tie rod ends from this car because the geometry the suspension geometry 
geometry works out to be quite a bit different. Um, the tie rods uh, in this car, the two inner ball joints are uh, way closer together than we could find on any um, rack and pinion steering rack. So that's why we'll have to do a little bit of uh, custom fabrication there, which we'll show you guys uh, and then get this working without any bump steering. So after quite a bit of chiffon fabrication, this is how far we've gotten with the steering rack. Um, we have it mounted in place. We have uh, these two things on the sides, which we're going to be welding our other thing on, which is going to basically we're going to uh, our plan is that we're going to connect the flat bar going across. So basically, the geometry is going to be pretty much what it was with the stock suspension. We are going to change like some things around. Of course, we're going to add more caster and stuff later. But uh, for now, at least the steering geometry is going to be pretty much proper with the setup without any bump steer so that's all going to be pretty good but next the part we have to get to now is uh, putting the uh, actual steering column from the c63 into this car which is uh, it has these electric motors so it can like move come out tilt and like uh, also go forwards and backwards and it already comes with like uh, we already have this rubber boot that we need to basically make a big hole and this thing needs to go through and this spline shaft which is for it to like change length and still be connected to the steering so yeah uh, next we got to figure all that first we're going to start off by mounting this in the car uh, figuring out the proper location for the steering and then we're going to make a hole a new hole on this side of the car so here is the situation inside the car right now so this is where the actual steering goes but we um, the steering the whole thing the dash is a little different on that side and of course we needed a little bit of a different height too to fit our steering column because it's different than this one so Stefan has uh, well made that contraption over there and <laughs> he's working on putting a square tube in there so what's your plan so what's gonna happen is I mocked it up welded some nuts in there for the new steering column to be bolted up to that once I weld this in place I'm gonna chop out this lower piece here so it'll be roughly about the same height as the original yeah so that's the plan uh, let's uh, well let's keep working on it then try to bolt the c63 string column in there and see how things line up So after some more fabrication, Stefan has been able to mount the steering column in place and we've put the steering wheel in place. We've, uh, well, the position worked out to be fairly nice now. Um, it lines up exactly the way like the steering wheel should be in this car. Of course, the steering wheel is adjustable. Unlike that one, you can actually move it up and down, but uh, by default, we wanted to put all the controls in the center and then line up their positions properly so that from that position, you can go up, down, forwards, backwards, wherever you want. Uh, and it's looking pretty good. So right now it looks kind of funny. Car with two steering wheels. So you get to choose whether you want to drive it sitting over here or sitting over there. But of course, yeah, soon enough we're going to be getting rid of that anyways. But uh, next, the step that we are at now is uh, we need to drill a hole through the firewall. Um, 
or the foot well and we need to join that shaft all the way till the steering rack the little shaft that we have over there so lining that up is also going to be a, a little bit of a challenge because things have to line up pretty well and in terms of length uh, even though i've already shortened the uh, shaft on the steering rack by quite a bit i still think we're going to be a little longer than what we're supposed to be uh, because uh yeah just because of the way the steering rack is much closer in this car to the steering wheel than it was in the c63 and also in the s class so uh, that's why uh, we're probably going to have to do some more modification on this shaft too. Um, probably make it shorter um, just so that everything can match up. But let's actually put it all together first. See how things line up and then go from there and try to actually make it work. Yeah. So after this point, as it turned out, we have to do a lot of modification on the steering column. Pretty much change everything to actually make it work with this car. But luckily, Stefan with his angle grinder and all his tools was able to make it work. So here's a look at everything after the steering wheel is connected all the way till the steering rack and uh, now when you turn the steering wheel you actually are turning the steering rack which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to turn it too much because power steering fluid comes out every time I turn it but um, it, it looks, it, it's, it feels pretty cool like it's all nicely solid mounted not like the old crappy steering wheel that uh, flops all around and had ages of play in it and everything and also it's fully electrically adjustable you can move it anywhere you want which is something that the old steering wheel of course didn't even have and um, of course the right hand drive conversion well half of it is already done because the steering wheel is on this side in the next video we're also going to be moving the uh, brake pedal over here which uh, we still haven't decided with there's a few ways to go for that which I'll talk about but the only thing we haven't gotten into doing is uh, connecting the tie rod ends to the wheels I was also hoping to get it done in this video but we've run a little short on time just because things have taken much longer than expected fitting the whole steering column in here doing all the cutting and modification we had to do on it and we still need to add the rubber and everything to seal it so that the engine bay uh, the interior is sealed from the engine bay um, so yeah, there's a little bit more work left, but at least I can show you guys everything we have to do next on the car to um, actually link the steering rack to the tires. So here's a look at things underneath the car and uh, yeah, the steering rack mounted over here. Of course, it's an awfully tight fit just like everything else. And when you turn the steering wheel, well, the shaft coming from the steering wheel, now you can see the tire, well, the steering rack actually moves. So now next, the thing we had to do was, of course, we had to link this to the wheels so that when this thing moves, the wheels actually turn. But uh, doing that was, of course, not as simple as just connecting these old tie rod ends to here, because if we were to do that, well, the problems would have been that, first of all, when you will turn the steering wheel fully, um, the wheels will not turn fully. They will only turn a little bit. And also the angles would be all wrong. So the suspension would have an awful lot of bumps here. So basically to fix all that, what we have to do is we have to change the location of this ball joint. We need to bring it somewhere over here, which of course means making custom steering knuckles. We need to change these ones. And of course we need to also change the location of this ball joint. We need to bring it somewhere over here. And uh, basically, yeah, we need to make custom tie rod ends we need to make custom tie rods and we need to do a little bit of fabrication over here connect like a bar going across this whole steering rack so that we can add like extra bolting points um, for the ball joints somewhere over here so that all the geometry basically on the suspension is going to be perfect which i was really hoping we were going to get to in this video but uh, things took an awfully long time to do modifying all the steering column stuff to actually make it work and of course fitting all the radiators and everything that took awfully long as well so uh, but that leaves some more talking to do for the next video and in the next video we're also going to be uh, modifying the suspension a little bit changing the suspension angles around so they're that they're more similar to the angles on the c63 so basically our goal is that you'll not only have a c63 steering wheel in the car uh, you will also have a c steering wheel that will feel like um, the c63 steering wheel so that's going to be really cool when the whole thing is working but of course 
it's a lot of work still left to do <laughs> to get to that point so yeah um this project well it has been awfully difficult just look at how tight of a fit everything is the whole engine sitting in this chassis it's literally all just packed in there all the radiators and everything so it's really difficult putting all that stuff and like making it work in such a tiny car but um, I think judging by the way things are going it should be a really nice final result when things do work but of course getting to that point <laughs> will take an awfully long time still so yeah that's gonna be everything for this video I'm um, talking about a project that hopefully will not take as long as this one this is a 500 SCC which we're putting a V12 engine into and things are going pretty quick on this one the engine transmission drive shaft everything is already connected next up we will be putting turbos on it if you want to stay tuned with all these projects definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button notification bell and yeah that's everything for now thanks for watching see you in the next one <laughs>